All right, coaches. We're not off to a bad start this year, but I definitely want to see some improvement going forward, especially on the offensive end. You know, Darkunas has been a guy that has been showing that he can score on both ends of the floor, but really what we need is a second option opposite of Antonio. Antonio Johnson, he's been our leading scorer, but we've been struggling to find that second guy to really you know, take over when Johnson may be having an off game or when he's going on a stretch where he can't hit shots. We know Johnson's our best scorer, but we really need that number two option. So we're going to start Marshall Allison in the next coming games, and I'm going to see what he can do. This will be his first action of the season. He can shoot the three. He's a stretch four, and he's a junior, so he's going to have some experience just learning from the older guys the past couple of years. And I'm excited about the move. We just need to get better on offense. We'll see what happens entering conference play, but let's get this job done. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome to Big South Conference Play here in the UCF Dynasty. Now, so far this year, we have actually struggled scoring the basketball, so that's where we look to recruiting. Now, we already have one commit, but a second guy that we really need to get is a score, and it's definitely something that we are definitely looking at. Now, Rocco McGinnis is interesting. He's not a guy that scored a lot in high school, so I'm not that high on him. Jamal Williams is another guy that we have, but we need to figure something out here. We need to find a recruit, and we might just take this to the offseason. Justin Chapman is a guard, but he only averages 12.7% from three, so... I just don't know about our recruits this year. We don't have that many recruiting points, and we will get that once we start winning and start getting these recruiting goals. So we already met one so far. We'll see if we can keep it up and hopefully start winning games in conference. So today we go up against VMI, who does have the leading scorer in the conference in Mike White. He does play kind of a small ball center position, so we will have to see how that will go for this team but we will see what UCF can do with Marshall Allison now getting the start at the four. And we really need that, that second scoring option who can be consistent. And it doesn't have to be 20 points per game. It can just be 10 points, but a guy that can get us buckets in stretches. So we'll see what happens entering conference play. Let's get it underway as Darkunas does win the tip off. Jack McAbee back at starting point guard after Milo Yarbrough started last episode, the last game. And here's Johnson looking for his own shot. Now, I want to see McAbee hopefully step up as well. Maybe he can find other guys, at least, you know, get that assist total up. And maybe that will create some shots for some of the guys. Here is McAbee, though, passing to the corner. Johnson passes inside. This is Marshall Allison under the basket. And he gets the first bucket of the game. And that's a great start right there. Get him going early. Get his confidence up. Here's a missed shot by VMI. Going the other way is Antonio Johnson. All the way to the basket, and he draws the foul on Mike White, their leading scorer. Antonio Johnson may be going for that conference player of the year, too, this year because seeing that, you know, the highest point per game guys in the conference are at 20 points, Antonio Johnson is third in scoring. So here we go. Another possession here, up 4 nothing versus VMI. Here's McAbee passing around to Mwangi. Johnson from three, and he hits it. 7-0 start here for UCF. And now we have the seven-point lead here on defense. Here they are working around the perimeter. Here's a drive against Johnson. Fade away. Shot in the lane. It's good. And VMI is on the board for the first time today. But here is Johnson the other way. He draws the foul. And one thing about Johnson is that if you give him space, he can do some stuff with it. Here he is getting a steal on defense. Remember, he does he does lead the team in steals. He averages over 1.5 a game. He's got nine early points here to open conference play, making a statement early. Mwangi on the rebound. Here we go the other way in transition, working it to the wing. McAbee passes inside. Oh, look at that. Mwangi gets it right back. It's an easy bucket in the lane, a layup. And now here we go. An early lead, offensive board by Marcunas. If we can get that right there, offensive boards from Marcunas, just put back buckets, we will be in good shape. Another steal. The defense has ramped up so far in the first half. Here is Johnson. Easy layup. He's got 11 early points, 404 from the field as well. 11-point early lead. 
Here's a fadeaway shot. Good defense that time. A long outlet pass by Darkunas up to Maccabee. This time in the lane. Jump shot is good. 19-6 start here for the UCF Knights. And now here we go. Once again off the bench. This is going to be Cody Stanley. He draws the foul. And how about this UCF offense so far? In transition, we might have to change our tempo up. We still have it at balance so far, not half court, but balance. We might have to change it to up tempo. Here's a jump shot from the free throw line. That's gonna be Jay Henry who hits the jump shot. Maybe he's that second scoring option. We haven't tried him yet in the starting lineup, but Johnson just continuing to attack. He's got 13 in the first half and VMI is in trouble down by 14. More defense. Here we go the other way. Devon Bands does get the dunk in transition. And now it is up to a 16 point lead at that point. But UCF fights their way back, back to a 12 point game. Johnson looking for the pick this time. Henry gives it to him. Open three at the top. And that's good. 16. He is six of six to start this game. And how about this UCF? Offense so far, just knocking down everything. Got to figure we'll come back to earth sometime soon, but I love the way we're what we're doing here. Cody Stanley passing over to the right side. Mwangi with the floater. 30 seconds left in the half. We need to play some defense. A long, long hook shot. Off defensive board by Cody Stanley, pushing it up the court. 10 seconds to go, working for the last shot. We got to give it to the hot hand here. Johnson steps back. Here he is trying to create some space, stepping back again. He just takes the fadeaway three at the buzzer and it's going to be off. But UCF's offense showing that potential. Antonio Johnson with the game high in scoring. He's got 16 early points, 33 to 20. So here we go to start the second half. Can we keep up this offense? But here is VMI answering with an and one to start the second half. A foul on McAbee right there. They do hit the and one free throw, 35 to 27 now. McAbee open three, and that one is gonna be off. That's one thing that we do lack as well. We don't have that three-point shooting, which is why we were looking for that in recruiting. But look at VMI answering back now, a couple of buckets. It's back to a six-point game. They have crawled all the way back. Johnson in the corner, three, and he is hot. 19 points for Antonio Johnson so far, and now we're up by eight. But VMI answering back right here with the shot. Fade away, and that one's off. Johnson on the rebound. He's going coast to coast, and he does take it all the way. A 10-point lead here for UCF. How about this offense? Passing inside, and VMI does answer, though. That bucket is good, and now here they are down by seven. More defense being played by VMI. They go the other way now. They look like a different team in the second half. Driving, spinning layup, and they do draw the foul on Devon Bands, and they will go to the line. Now a five-point game. Johnson getting to a spot. A little floater off the glass. Back up to a seven-point lead, but can somebody else score besides Johnson? Working it inside, jump shot. Offensive board by VMI and put back up and in. And now it is up back to a four point game. VMI has come all the way back. Defensive rebound by Marshall Allison. Up the court is Coley Stanley trying to push it. He makes a move to the basket, passes it to Henry. Henry up fake. He backs down, throws one up, and that one is off. So now VMI has a chance to come down the court. Spinning layup, and this one will be good two-point game, six minutes to go. Looking for the pick, Cody Stanley, all the way to the bucket, left hand, and he gets this one to go. There we go, up by four now. We need to hold on to this lead, especially with Antonio Johnson out of the game here. Defensive rebound, pushing it up. Jay Henry tries to go all the way to the basket and does draw the foul. And Jay Henry goes to the line. Maybe he is gonna be our second option here. We haven't put him in the starting lineup yet, but it could be coming as he hits the first free throw. The second one is also good. We're up to a six point game here with six minutes to go. But VMI, good ball movement this time. Easy bucket on the inside, down to a four point game. We send the double team this time, trying to knock it away, but good pass inside and they find the open man. A two point game now. Johnson checks back in. Here's a three. Maybe he's a little cold. That one was long. 
And now VMI goes down the court with a chance to tie this ball game up, even take the lead. We send the double team. They work it around the perimeter. This is a three in the corner. And VMI takes the lead here. They're up by one, 51 to 50. Four minutes to go. Missed shot again by VMI. Here we go in transition. Working it. Johnson with the layup and cannot get it to go. Incredible. He missed a wide open shot that time. And here is VMI. Right under the hoop. 9-0 run. Three minutes to go. VMI takes this late lead. Here's Devon Bands, and he gets a tough one. That one will bring it within one. And now here we go. Under two minutes. Let's see if we can come up with a stop. Long pass, almost a deflection, but the three is good. Four point lead here for VMI. So VMI up four points now with under two minutes to go. And Cody Stanley does draw the foul that time. He goes to the free throw line, he hits one. He's got five in this game off the bench. The second one is off and now VMI gets a defensive rebound. They come the other way, a minute 20 to go. Driving in a layup. That one's missed. Offensive rebound. It's good. VMI with the five point lead. But here we are driving. Cody Stanley. And one. 55 58. He's got seven. He goes to the free throw line for his fifth free throw of the game to make this one a two point game. And the shot is good. Stanley just did a good job right there, getting us right back in it with two buckets. And now we're down by two, corner three. This one's off, offensive rebound. You've gotta be kidding me. 60 to 56. Here we go now, down by four. McAbee drives and another foul. White's got five, he actually fouled out of this game. So their leading score is out. But McAbee goes to the line. He, hit, he misses the first free throw, hits the second. And now we're down by three, a big time stop needed here. 38 seconds and counting. A pass to the corner, drive, hop step, and they will get the continuation. And one, Theo Booker. He has only had 10 points in this game, but he has been killing us. He goes to the free throw line, a six point game. Down six now. Multiple possessions. Johnson with the three. That one is off. We allow VMI to come all the way back. This is a team with a losing record. And we lose to open. Big South play. You have got to be kidding me. Antonio Johnson was pretty much our lone score. Cody Stanley had a couple of nice plays. But we're not going to get that from Cody Stanley every single game. We just need a consistent number two. And look, Marshall Allison started out the game with a bucket, but that was the only bucket he had all game. Two points, two rebounds he finished with. Larry O'Neal, we need to figure out his game. He had zero points in this game. He is one of our leading scorers as far as uh, simulating games, but for some reason, when we control the team, just can't make shots. Well, here we are in Big South play, trying to figure out still this team we got to figure it out fast before we hit the conference tournament, but we have, you know, quite a few games to go before that. So we have some time, but the thing is, man, we just got to figure this out. Got to figure this out. Otherwise, we're going to have to look at recruiting and really go deep in it, but not all recruits are available to us. And if, if guys aren't interested in your school, then it's very, very hard. It's nearly probably impossible to get them to come to your school. So... That's the one thing about this game in recruiting is that, you know, if guys aren't interested, you're in trouble in recruiting. It's a pretty easy system, but we're going to have to see what happens this season. Well, we go up against Winthrop next and we end up losing big time, 71 to 44. So we start 0 and 2 in Big South Conference play. Winthrop's one of those schools that's always good in basketball. So they could be one of the top seeds in our conference tournament. The conference tournament is the only way we will get into the big dance. We do bounce back with a nice victory versus Coastal Carolina at home. Darkunas had 14 and 25. Ridiculous. He leads the uh, conference in rebounding this year by a long shot. He's going to definitely have that crown. 
And then we play them back-to-back -back games, this time at Coastal Carolina, in the same results. But this time, it's even worse. We absolutely throttle Coastal Carolina. At one point, it was 85-41. to We literally doubled their score at this point. And then we go on to win it 95-52. to our highest point total of the season right here. Darkunas had 10 and 15 only. Mwangi had a double-double, 12 and 11. But you got to think we're going to start to look to score like this when we're actually scoring or actually controlling the team. And we're going to have to look for that second option like I've been looking for. I think we're still searching who's going to be that second one. Then we go up against Radford next. And we go up by 16. And I decide to hop into this one. Radford had one of the worst records coming into conference play. And I just want to get a little warm up here before we continue conference play also going into the next couple of episodes. 73 to 57 when we hop into the game. Here is Maccabee getting the pick, passing over to the corner. Open three. Antonio Johnson knocks it down. Our conference's leading scorer right now is Johnson. Is here we go the other way. 76-57. Marshall Allison all the way with the left hand bucket. Maybe we just need to keep playing with Allison. I'm not sure. Now, he can handle the basketball, obviously, not be a point forward, but he can be a, kind of a Kevin Love type of role. He can shoot the three if he needs to. We'll see what he can do. Cody Stanley goes to the line. He does draw the foul, get into the bucket. He does get to the line quite a bit. Maybe this is something that, you know, we catch on with with Cody Stanley. Jordan White's also good with drawing fouls. As here is a corner jump shot. Wow. That one was a tough shot right there. 85 80 to 65. Radford starts to hit some crazy shots now. That's another corner three. Now down by 12. Another three. This one's good. It's back to a 10-point game now. This is what happens when we play. These teams just get hot all of a sudden, even if they're bad shooting teams, and all of a sudden we go to the line. They're starting to foul here, but they're down by 12 with 40 seconds left. They pretty much got no shot here. But here is McAbee at the line. He hits the first. This is the second. And here comes Radford the other way as they need a big three, a couple of big threes, to be honest with you. 34 seconds over to the corner. Another tough shot. Another one. 81 to 71 now. Wow. You've got to be kidding me. How about this team just fighting in this one? Maccabee goes to the line, hits the first. This is the second. And here they go the other way again. Off defensive rebound. They throw the ball all the way up the court. Quick trigger on the three. This one's off. Antonio Johnson. Actually, that's Darian Edwards on the rebound. And Antonio Johnson dribbles this one out. One more shot. And he hits it at the buzzer. No sportsmanship right there. And we end up winning this one by 14. It was actually a lot closer. If it wasn't for that, just chucking up three by Antonio. But still, we get the victory. Games like that are scary because, like, we jump into it and they all of a sudden start coming back, start hitting these crazy shots. And at least we get the victory. I mean, that's all that matters. Antonio Johnson with that three ends up having a 30-point game, 32-3. and three. Good little you know, stretch of games for him. He has definitely taken over that uh, points per game uh, leader. He's averaging 20.4. That's when he came into this episode actually averaging. So he's right back at what he did, but he still leads the conference in scoring. You can already see Winthrop is 5-0 and no to start conference play. We do play a couple of other guys. VMI is 2-3. and three. Radford's 3-6 and six already. They played nine conference games already. We're 3-2. and two. And we're 12 and 6 overall. Not a bad overall record, but we will see if we can continue these uh, kind of sim wins into actual wins when we control the team. Winthrop's on an eight great game win streak. I can't wait, wait to play them again. I want to play them as a full game episode. So watch out for that one. I don't know if it's coming up, but we'll have to see. We'll have two more episodes in conference play, then we'll hop into the conference tournament. So that's kind of how I want to do it. But we'll see what happens. Hit subscribe, hit that like button. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Too easy. I've been there, done it, seen it. Boy, all that like Kenan. Still got crack, they feeling. Flow still hot like Phoenix. Shine so bright, I'm gleaming. This off top, I'm tweaking. Fresh out the rat like me. And I'm still trying to fight my demons. Cause we all gotta act like Tina. That's why I gotta ride with the Nino. Outside, it's a war.